Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got a great presentation today. We're going to teach you everything under nine minutes about a great, another important topic, herpes simplex virus 2. And my name is Pramil Charet. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency, and I teach medical students and residents. I'm also director of research. Okay, let's get into our topic today. So just briefly about an introduction about um, herpes simplex virus. It's part of the human herpes viridae family. It's also known as HHV2. It's one of the most common sexually transmitted diseases people are worried about. It's, and um, herpes uh, infection is widespread throughout the world and almost exclusively sexually transmitted is causing genital herpes. A lot of times it could be asymptomatic and the last word is lifelong and incurable. Okay. So <clears throat> let's look at the structure of the virus first. So you have four parts. Um, one is the core. The core consists of the single linear molecule um, DSDNA in the form of a torus. And then you got the capsid surrounding the core. It's an icosahedral capsule with 100 a nanometer diameter, constructor of 162 capsomeres. Then you have a tegument that's between the capsid and the envelope. Okay. Then you have the envelope, which is the outer layer of the virus. Um, now, if you look at the epidemiology, you know, a large number or huge number of patients in the world are infected with um, uh, herpes 2. And estimated, like you say, 491 million aged 15 to 49, that's around 13 percent have HSV 2 infection. Let's look at the numbers in the United States. About 11.9 percent are believed to have HSV 2. And again, this is what we talked about is one of the common sexually transmitted diseases you can have. If you look at the pathogenesis of um, herpes, the transmission of primary inf infection occurs when close contact or sexual contact, mucosal surface, genital or oral secretions, and the infected person starts shredding the virus, right? And then virus enters through the mucous membrane and um, through the skin or then cytolytic replication in the epithelial cells of the site of the entry of the host. And then primary genital uh, herpes infection starts, usually forms with the clusters, erythematous papules on the vesicles on external genitalia, the common presentation, usually hap happens after four to seven days. And then you got the virus to go through the sensory dorsal root ganglion from the skin and they stay there forever and then your latent reaction happens later, okay? Um, if you look at the transmission, we already said it's like sexually transmitted diseases, mainly through sex or contact with the genital surfaces, skin, sores or fluids or someone, um, any type of fluid the per if the person is infected with the virus is contagious and HSV to transmit it from the skin in the genital or anal area that can perfectly look normal but may have underlying uh, herpes infection. In rare circumstances, you can have HNC infection transfer from a mother to the infant during delivery and ca can cause neonatal herpes. If we look at the signs and symptoms, genital adverse infection, you, I mean, sometimes, a lot of times, you can say like no symptoms, okay? They remain asymptomatic for a long time. Most in infected people don't know they have it. That's why the transmission rate is high. Large number of people are having when they have um, unprotected sex. Typically, about 10 to 20 percent of the people at HSV infection report a prior diagnosis of genital herpes, okay? When symptoms occur, genital herpes characterize one or more genital or anal blisters. That is a common thing. Or open sores called ulcers can also be seen. And the symptoms of new genital inf infections are, uh, other than the ulcer, are fever. You can have fever, you can have body ache, and then you can have like swollen lymph glands, okay? After the initial uh, genital herpes infection with HSV2, then you started having the recurrent symptoms. So what are the recurrent uh, symptoms you can have? Uh, that would be like severe than the presentation you have before, the severe ulcer, and then frequency of the outbreaks kind of become, um, tend to decrease over time, but it can start, can go on for a longer, many, many years. And then people who are infected with HSV2 may experience a sensation of mind, uh, some mild tingling or shooting pain in the legs, hips, or buttocks before the appearance of genital ulcers. Okay, and that's also very common. They can have uh, symptoms of the tingling and shooting pain before actual the genital ulcers are showing up. 
You can have bilateral clusters of erythematous papules and vesicles on external genitalia, usually four to seven days after the sexual exposure. And the lesions can do appear in the perianal region or it can also appear in the buttocks region. So how do you diagnose? That's our next slide. Herpes simplex, you can do like uh, polymerase chain reaction, you can do viral culture. Okay, let's go to the blood test to detect um, HSV2. You got, first you have the ELISA, immuno, ELISA enzyme linked immunoassay. They have high specificity for detecting HSV1 and high sensitivity for detecting HSV2. Then you have to go to this, uh, you can do the uh, herpes simplex virus serology test, which is like immuno, which is there is immunoglobulin G test followed by serological type specific glycoprotein G uh, based assay. Okay, so if you have the GG test, the sensitivity and specificity is pretty high from 97 percent to 98 percent. Pretty good test, right? Now, you can also do the viral culture. Sensitivity declines when rapidly as the lesion, once the lesions start healing, the sensitivity goes down. So sensitivity is around 50 percent and the specificity is 100 percent for viral culture. Now, you can do PCR. This is very sensitive and faster than the viral culture. You can get the results faster. Touch the toys to detecting um, HSV in the spinal fluid for diagnosis, HSV infection in the central nervous system. Now let's look at the sensitivity and specificity is 98% to 100% and then specificity is almost like 97%, okay? Now, what are the treatments for um, HSV2? Recommended treatments, acyclovir 400 milligram orally three times daily for seven to 10 days, or you can do famiclovir 250 mg orally uh, three times daily for seven to 10 days. And the recommended other um, treatment options for daily suppression therapy, if, they're, if you're having like a recurrent genital herpes, are like you do acyclovir 400 mg orally twice daily, and uh, famiclovir 250 mg twice daily and then always counsel the infected, pa infected patient and their sexual partners. You need to notify the sexual partners also and provide education and counseling for both uh, sexual partners, okay? So the treatment um, antivirals are cyclovir, famciclovir, valcyclovir are the most effective medication for the people infected with HSV. This will help to reduce the symptoms, but you know, there's no cure. Like you cannot cure the infection, remember that. So a very important sexually transmitted infection. Once you get it, please remember, there's no cure, but you can suppress some of the symptoms. So it's very, very important to practice safe sex in now these days. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Thank you.